In this video, we're going to look at two TypeScript techniques that I think play really well together. Let's jump right into some example code here. And you can see that we're using the example of incrementing metrics. I'm guessing we all do some kind of observability and metrics tracking in the code that we write. And this is a really great way to look at those two techniques. The first one is string validation, specifically string literal validation. Metrics are kind of a unique thing in our code because most of the other strings that we work with, as far as the actual you know business purposes of our applications go, usually Usually those strings are coming from databases, from users, from other APIs. They're not string literals that we're typing into our code. However, metrics usually are. And metrics are also a place where we sometimes want to enforce some formatting. Maybe your metrics collection platform only allows a lowercase, and so you want to make sure you don't have a camel case metric. Uh, maybe you want to make sure you have certain special characters that aren't part of the metric name because it just makes them hard to search for. What we want to do is find a way to have a list of disallowed characters. And we can do that with some string parts in TypeScript so that we actually get type level errors for this type of stuff. We kind of have a, an increment metrics function here that has some metric name that takes this, this T that is a string. And what we're going to do is do some validation on our T type here. So we already know that it's a string. That's great. In fact, we can see that we have like a first level of validation already, whereas if I try to set this up as a number, you can see number is not assignable to type string. What we can do is we can check to see that T extends a particular string literal. We want to infer some first part of the string, say underscore A, meaning I don't really care what comes at the beginning of this string T. That could match no characters. So that's okay in TypeScript. But what I do care about is somewhere in the middle, we see something from this disallowed characters union. And then we're going to infer some other stuff at the end of this string. And let's get our question mark there, never or T. Now, if you're not familiar with extends in TypeScript, I've done a bunch of videos that talk about extends a while ago now. Now, basically what we're saying is, is type T a subtype of some pattern here? For example, we could say T extends string here. We're saying is T some type that is a subtype essentially of string. But now we're going even further. Is T a subtype of this particular pattern of string where we have some characters at the beginning that we're inferring, maybe none, but then we do see a disallowed character and then we see maybe some other characters at the end. And if that's the case, then metrics name is never. That's not an allowed type. Otherwise, we'll return T. That's okay. We can use that. And so you can see for our first string here, that's fine. Hello as a metric name is fine with a quote in it. That's wrong. And you can see the type actually returns never because we can see argument string is not assignable to parameter of type never. Hello world camel case here is fine. Hello world with a new line in it is not fine. And the empty string is fine. So we've correctly matched two out of our four incorrect metric types here. And so using this type of matching on a template literal like this, where we can check to see that our string extends this particular pattern is a great way to enforce formatting on literal strings in our code. So we've matched our first bit of validation. We've figured out how to not allow the, anything in our disallowed characters list. What about not allowing camel case or more specifically not allowing uppercase characters in our metric name? Well, we're going to add another ternary to this type here. So we're going to do it in place of where this final T is, right? So we're going to first check to see if we match this particular pattern. If we do, we're going to end. That's not allowed. However, if we don't, then let's break this down here. We can say, does T extends? And we're going to use lowercase t. Lowercase is a built-in TypeScript utility that basically gives you, if t is a string, it gives you an all lowercase version of that string, right? It, it's like calling to lowercase on the string. This is useful in this case because t extends lowercase t only in the case where t originally was already all lowercase. So if it has uppercase characters, that's not going to match that string. And so in that case, we can also say never. Otherwise, we know, actually, sorry, now I have that backwards. If it does match, then t is fine otherwise never. We have three errors here. We have obviously our quote, obviously our new line, but now we also have hello world with the uppercase W. We have one more to match, which is empty string. As you could guess, we're going to add another ternary in here. We could say, uh, does T extends, and this one really easy, does it extend empty string? If it does, then never. There we go. We now have a metric name type that gives us valid metric names for all of the validations that we care about, special characters, uppercase letters, and empty strings. So that's the first tip here, which is that we can do this type of string validation in various ways. We kind of have three patterns here. We have some string transformer utility here using a built-in utility. We can just match against other literal strings, 
or we can do pattern matching with template literal syntax. The problem here now is in all three of these cases, we just get the argument of type string is not assignable to type never. It would be nice if we could give the, the user a better error instead of just saying type never in all three cases. Better type errors is something I've been pursuing in TypeScript for a long time. And there are a couple of ways you can do it. None of them are really that great. I'm going to show you one method that I have today, which I think is pretty decent. What we can do is create a new type, no empty string. Let's just alias never to no empty string. And right here is our empty string. So we're going to put here, no empty string. And if you're looking at this type, that's actually kind of good. We have this no empty string here as a label. We can see what this is. However, if we look at this, you can see that TypeScript kind of normalizes it and we get type never because it sees, okay, well, this is just type never. Let's simplify this and show the user the simplest possible error. They don't have to go hunting for no empty string. What I have been doing is basically to create a branded type. And you can kind of use an object with whatever the field name you want. Have a convention for your code base, for your team, for your library, and just stick with it. I like double underscore brand. And in here, we could do a couple of things. We could say no empty string. The truth is that this text doesn't actually help us in this error, right? Basically what this does is it allows TypeScript to not simplify this error message. And we get the user and the user here will now see type string is not assignable to parameter of type no empty string. And so we're getting the name of our type here. The other thing you could do and I kind of like this idea. I haven't used it that much, but you could actually have just like a, a human readable helpful error message here. As you can see, no empty string is still all that shows up here. But now we actually have something where if the user follows that through, maybe they navigate to metric name and they see no empty string and they navigate back here. And that's could be a little more useful. One thing that just came to mind for me right now that I've never tried before is I wonder about like a JS doc thing. Sometimes TypeScript will like actually pull those in. And so I wonder now if you can see we do get this down here. And so I don't think we're going to get any of that here. If we look at the error message. We still just get that. So, you know, that's a, a way you can play around with this. But at least having a, a named type like this, I think is useful to give your user a little bit more information. And so, of course, we can create something like this for the other ones. Disallowed chars used. We could put that one in place of this dever. Disallowed chars used. Uppercase chars used right here at the end. And so now let's double check that we get the right errors here. We can see if we have a quote in it, disallowed characters used. If we have the capital W, uppercase characters used. And if we have a new line character, disallowed characters used. And we already saw with the empty string, no empty string. Let me know what you think of this idea. The string validation I think is super useful. Is this a nice way to do error messages or better error messages in TypeScript? I don't know. I would love to hear your thoughts on this and let me know if you have other ideas. Also, this channel just reached 20,000 subscribers. I'm coming up on about like three years of me doing this pretty consistently, although to be fair, I took off a lot of last year. Um, 20,000 guys, thank you so much for commenting, for liking, for subscribing. I would love to do like a Q&A video. I don't know if anyone's interested in that, but if you are, leave comments down below and maybe the next video is a Q&A one. Thank you guys so much for watching, for commenting, for liking, as I said, and I will see you in the next one.